I used to revere my Mr. Malik and I was so happy when she made the film which we are going to see. It. I have seen a couple of them earlier. I am going to see it today again and I, I, I would love it and I am sure you all will like it. So thank you. Come please, Sanita. And start. So we started, 
He started very reluctantly with me. He said that, let's see how long it continues. But it continued for almost five years. And by the end of the third year, he said, you are in a wrong profession. Tum yaha pe bureaucracy mein kya kar you? you have that fire, you should go to the art college, you should have become a full-time artist. I said, I will do both. So after three years and three and a half years, he said, uh, if you are ready, you, you can do a show. And I was very naive, I took his word seriously. And we went to Bill Academy, we uh, discussed, and then they said, show me your work. And then without even doing a group show, I went for a solo. So I am one artist in, in her naivety and very being a very naive person, I decided to do a show and that was my first solo show which happened in 1995. And I was very close to Mother Teresa, I said, Mother, please come and inaugurate the show. She said, okay, fine. I said, we will, uh, whatever we sell, we will do it for charity. She said, okay, give it to cry. I said, okay, fine. And it just started. And the show was a success, maybe because Mother Teresa came to inaugurate it. And second, it was for charity, it was for cry. We were trying to make a small uh, education center for slum dwellers, uh, kids. So, I sold almost everything. And then after that, I never looked back and art gripped me with great passion. And I don't know whether the painting is more passionate to to my heart or whether poetry is that, but I think all these aspects of life are intermingled. Sometimes when I'm writing poetry, I do not paint for a few months altogether. And when I'm not writing, then I'm painting for months together. And if I'm shooting for a film, then I leave these two beside. So one, but at a time, I only do one thing. So that's the crux of this woman. And uh, I will just take you through my journey. Uh, I became an abstract painter by default in the sense that I started with very, very figurative works. I did uh, woman figures, then I did uh, landscapes, all kinds of things in the beginning. Then my second solo was all about my ink sketches, very serious ink sketches I did. Okay. Can we start from the back, the last slide? This is going to be Yeah. So this was the uh, one of my uh, charcoal work, which I, this was part of my first solo, which was in 1995. And uh, everybody said that you are going to only do this, it's come out very well. But uh, my spiritual guru said that one day you are going to be an abstract artist. I said I, I cannot relate to abstract. He said, somehow you will be known as an abstract artist and you will gradually only do abstract and you will not be able to do figures. And now it has come to be true that now I don't do figures. They don't interest me anymore. The human anatomy or the landscape in its original form doesn't interest me anymore because I feel it is already there. The, the real beauty of a anatomy of a, of a woman or a man or a or the landscape is already there. So what is there which I have contributed there? It is God's creation, everybody can see. And as a mortal human being, I thought that let me try and bring that element from my heart, which has not been done as yet. <laughs> so I decided that gradually, you know, from my work, all human elements started vanishing. They just vanished. Then uh, all, uh, you know, realistic, kind of uh, trees it is from the same show which I this I, uh, this is a watercolor work which I uh, did in 1994 and uh, still I think now if I look back to my own work I feel that I was already into abstract my I'm not into a real full uh, full fledged figurative artist next one this is a night nice, uh, scene which I've done with ink with a wash of watercolor and uh, say when the Navratri starts we do this uh, our invocation just uh, the symbols of uh, Devi Durga so, uh, this is uh, when I came to Delhi I shifted to Delhi in 1996 and I thought that whatever was happening inside me has been reflected in these 
words also. I mean, no, no, I, and I didn't realize that. This is a, a French paper, uh, blackish beige, on which I have done uh, drawing with white ink. Person, when I came to Delhi, I went to Apex and I said that uh, my show was scheduled in Apex, but uh, I didn't know anybody in Delhi at that time. So I said, I'm looking for a person who could help me in curation, and I'm also looking for a chief guest. Mr. Manohan Kaur was the president of IFX. Then I said, I need to talk to you. We started talking then. He said, it's too noisy. Let's go out and talk. I did not know what kind of uh, target personality he was. I was talking with us. I said, I also write poetry. He said, to me, and all this. So I talked to him. He took me part. Who is this? Uh, including Mr. Ramjandran and other others. So I'll be this again is a very important show and it was a, a big stepping stone in my uh, career as an abstract painter. This show happened in Kumar Gyanji. I must say the third person after Sanitre sir and Kesha Malik, the third most important person who really helped me to be what I am today is Mr. Kumar. He gave me a big opportunity. One day he came to my studio and said, I've seen some of your works in the Shudrani and Tiveni and I have been watching your work. Can I come to your studio and see some works? That day he came. We had coffee and we talked about my work for two, three hours and then he said, would you like to do a show with me? And that came as a most pleasant surprise because Mr. Kumar is supposed to be one person who understands abstract. And then we did a very, uh, these are only major canvases, 5 feet by 5 feet, 3 feet by 3 feet. I, uh, then for next, another next 8, 9 years I was with Kumar Gallery and uh, these are my canvases where they, Mr. Kumar also realized that he had faith in my work. You know, if somebody says that uh, your abstract, we really like it, it's very pure, uh, if you keep your purity, you are made to be known as Gatwani. So, to maintain your purity in anything, in your poetry or in your art, is very important. If you cannot maintain that purity, if you are trying to do something just for the name or just for the sake of it, then abstract cannot be there. I uh, have realized that uh, I have a spiritual guru also and then I realized that if I have to follow this path, this is going to be more challenging because I am not making figures, I am not making landscape. Some people may not be, most of the people may not be able to relate to my work. But uh, what is the purpose of my art? The purpose of my art is not only to please others, it is to please my own self, to liberate my own self. It's a journey where I am searching myself. I am trying to connect with myself and through Connecting with myself, I would connect to the universe. Because we all are part of the universe, but we are not, we don't, we are not, we take it for granted. We are not connected in the way we should be. And we should be connected. So, uh, for me, painting is a way of being happy. That's part of the journey. You have to go through all that and much more. And much more will only come when you decide that what is important for you, whether you want bliss or happiness. And once you decide that, I could, yes. We come to Gallery after high rises of the inward I added swelling, then I did gentle gesture, which is 2009. This book is here. Hmm, this is also here. This also is here. These are my uh, series, uh, yeah. some two, three years back, I started a series called Nights of Light. Darkness, to understand and realize the value of light. Mm -hmm. And one simple flicker of a matchbox can bring light and darkness has to go. But to go through the whole process, there's a process and you have to go through that to reach light. So I name my series Lights of Life.
This is the latest work. I have been now. I am uh, stationed in Jammu, mostly in Jammu and Kashmir. So this is my new work. Somehow a new element has come in, and that new element is basically I feel that uh, Kashmir and Jammu. These two places are very very powerful as far as connection of Shiv is concerned. So they are Shivites and they do believe that there has to be a amalgamation of Shakti and Shiv. Maybe I am staying in Jammu and all the time you know I have been going there and going to Sri Nagar. So some new elements have emerged in my work and I feel at the end of the day talking doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. Silence makes sense. <laughs> That's why I you are talking. Uh, I am talking. Uh, it is a conversation. Maybe yeah. I am sharing my experience yeah. with you. But if I have to go further, then I have to be in silence. So ultimately, silence is the most important thing in life. Where you are at peace with yourself. You are at peace with all your surroundings. If it's not only physical noise. There is so much of mental random noises. So till you ground yourself and make yourself comfortable with silence. Some people are so scared of silence that when they are all alone in their house, they TV ko chala dete ya music ko chala dete ki, so that ki, uh, unko akela that is true. So once you are comfortable with your self, then you are then you are not alone, not lonely. You are alone, and that alone time connects you with the universe. This, these are all truths which everybody knows, but one has to go through the whole process and experience it. So that's what I am trying to depict in my work. That uh, ultimately, when we are comfortable with ourselves, if I am not comfortable with my own self, can I bring any joy to anybody else? If I am not happy with my own company, can I give good company to others? We all have, we all need to ask ourselves. If I am not happy with my own self, if I cannot stay with myself, who can stay with me? So maybe I am talking all nonsense, but this is what is all my work is all about. of life. This is all what I wanted to share and. These works are of uh, last 12, 12, 13 years. Some one of my work, the red work, is of 2004. Then other paintings, different, different period. And ultimately, I also displayed four, five works of 2015, 16. So this is one journey, which is uh, I didn't go to art college, but I always feel happy about it that I didn't go to art college because I had. I'm an artist too. who believes in Guru Sishya Parampara. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to have one senior artist to teach me one to one, and not only for a few days, for years. So that divine grace through my guru. And whenever I, the process of my painting is, I don't choose my colors. I don't decide what uh, uh, colors I will take and what I never premeditate or never think. Uh, visually what will be on my canvas. I just pray in uh, my guru and then I somehow concentrate for 5-10 minutes as a meditation and then I start my work. So the whole process is uh, spontaneous. It's not very premeditated, predetermined or pre-planned and that, that is my liberation. I am not thinking of a particular painting or a color. <coughs> So these are my thoughts and my process, my journey. And I really, really appreciate you people who have come, spare your time and listen to what I want you to say and speak about my work. Now we would like to... Yes, to go back to where you end. When you say that you don't think when you are creating work, that's not very true. Of course, you know, because... All Maybe the whole cumulative no, experience... I'm not going to your own thought process. Because you see, deep down, our subconscious, like you very rightly, beautifully said in, in the middle of the presentation about the role of elements in your life, five basic elements. 
subconsciously, as an artist, you have always been ingrained in that. So when you sit in silence, which is where you find your own self, that's when all that subconscious latent thing enables you within five minutes to envisage what you want to put on canvas. And that's reflected in humor. So, that's, so it's, it's, it's like a spiral where I've been seeing your work for around about 18 years now. I began in 1998. <coughs> and it's always been interesting to see how your textures have evolved. And yet, in that evolution, you've been finding your own self. You know, so that's what I want to add to it. Thank you. You understood very well. Actually, whatever we do is the cumulative experience yeah. of all your life. Yeah. And uh, I think we need to put your non-thinking or silence in perspective. That's it. Because what happens is that you've been in places. I've had the happiness and privilege of being associated with you as a colleague, now as a, as, as a boss. <laughs> and so I know the kind of situations that you have professionally been in. So when you say that you can do only one thing at a time, Mm -hmm. You are talking of the creative pursuits, but on the other hand, your professional life goes on and it goes on very effectively because I found you as one of the most uh, outstanding officers that uh, have, are working around the place and at the moment you are working in a tandem. <laughs> so it's a state, yes. It's a tandem. And that is the silence when you are... Uh, creating, you shut that out. So that is when you are not, you're not thinking of the mundane, you are not thinking of the other things. And that is the silence you sit in, the, uh, the loneliness you sit in and then you create. So I think you can look at it in that perspective. And uh, which reflects in your work. I mean, suddenly from all the flats and the uh, plains, there is a sudden swirling that's yes, sir. going on. So that is the uh, you are in the middle of Kanda, and that is the creation. So now we can see the film on Kesha. On his 
birthday, 5th November, and we showed that uh, film in ICCR. I was no filmmaker. I did ask many people to help me to make the film, but the project was being so delayed that I thought that I may miss this opportunity of doing some evidence work on Kesho. So documentation was important for me. And Kesho was such a modest man. He said, my birthday is in film because I am not here. Why don't you make a film for me? I film bana hai. I wanted to make him feel very special on his birthday. So this was the first film which I made. After that, I made two more films uh, on Kesho because I thought that whatever he has said is very important for artists to know. So that way, this was the first film and then I made another film and then another film. Then I realized that so that was the journey of a filmmaker who became a filmmaker by default. Because people were not doing it, so I took upon myself that let me do it. So this was the third aspect of my work. And I am really, really very appreciative of all of you who have spent their time and come here and have uh, had the patience to go through what I have been showing and also listening to me. And I would really, really care if you want to say something about it or any suggestion, any advice, anything. Thank you. Lights. Lights. So that people can see. Thank you so much for being here, sir.